Abu Bakr was born into the clan of Tame of the noble Quraysh tribe. He was only two years younger than the Prophet himself. They not only became close friends during their early teens, but they also had many things in common. This strengthened their friendship as they matured, undertook business expeditions together, and shared their dislike of idolatry and other unjust practices which prevailed in Makan society at the time. Although a wealthy merchant, Abu Bakr was soft-spoken, kind-hearted and unusually generous in a society where materialism and greed was the order of the day. After Muhammad received his first revelation from God, through the angel Gabriel he shared the good news with his immediate family before approaching his best friend, Abu Bakr. Almost every other person the Prophet had invited to Islam asked questions or initially hesitated, but not so Abu Bakr. As soon as the Prophet informed him about his prophetic mission, Abu Bakr accepted it without any hesitation. For the next 23 years, Abu Bakr provided unflinching help and support to the Prophet. He involved himself in the thick of all the activities the Prophet undertook, and also accompanied him on his epoch-making journey from Makkah to Medina. In the process, he suffered untold personal loss and hardship, yet he never hesitated to use his considerable wealth and properties for the cause of the truth. In the tenth year of Muhammad's prophethood, a momentous event took place. The Prophet's miraculous night journey from Makkah to Jerusalem and ascension to heaven occurred. The Prophet narrated the whole event to his friends and foes alike, but the Makan chiefs joked and laughed at the Prophet. They then went to Abu Bakr and told him what the Prophet had related to them. Surely someone as down to earth as Abu Bakr could not believe such a fantastic tale, they thought to themselves. Have you listened to your friend? He is claiming to have visited Jerusalem and the sublime throne in the heavens last night, and talked with God Almighty. Would you believe it? They asked Abu Bakr. If he said so, then it is an absolute truth, retorted Abu Bakr without any hesitation. The Makans were seriously taken aback by Abu Bakr's unflinching faith and confidence in the Prophet. From that day on, Abu Bakr became known as the Truthful One. Although the Prophet did not directly nominate a successor before he died, by nominating Abu Bakr to lead the daily prayers he had implicitly pointed the way forward. Nevertheless, the Prophet left the final decision on appointing his successor to the discretion of his companions. It was unanimously agreed by the companions of the Prophet to elect Abu Bakr's successor to the Messenger of God. He was elected on account of his leadership abilities, great insight into Islamic teachings, and considerable experience of socio-political affairs. Caliph Abu Bakr's stance against political rebellion and social unrest helped put an end to all forms of political and social mischief in Arabia at the time. After restoring peace and order across the land, Caliph Abu Bakr turned his attention to the external enemies of the Islamic State. In the year 633, he authorized Khalid ibn al-Walid to take action against the subversive activities of the Persians. The Muslim army defeated the Persians and brought peace and order to that area. In the following year, elements of the Byzantine army began to instigate military raids and other provocative actions against the Muslim territories. When Heraclius, the emperor of the Byzantine Empire, received news of the Muslim advance, he sent a large army to crush the Muslims. Under Khalid's inspirational leadership, 45,000 Muslims inflicted a crushing defeat on the approximately 150,000 strong Byzantine contingent. In just over two years, Caliph Abu Bakr helped transform the fortunes of Islam. More importantly, encouraged and supported by Umar, he brought together all the parchments on which the Qur'an was written during the Prophet's lifetime and compiled them in the form of one book. He was therefore instrumental in preserving the divine revelation in its original, pristine form for the benefit of posterity. Like the Prophet, Caliph Abu Bakr led his people by his example. Abu Bakr led a very simple life. He ate most frugally and used to wake up in the middle of the night to cry before his Lord. Being very spiritually inclined, he had little time for the wealth and material possessions of this world. Given Abu Bakr's mystical orientation, it is not surprising that a number of leading Sufi tariqa, such as the Naqshbandiyya, trace their spiritual affiliation back to the Prophet through him, 